There are so many fashion rules for women and these just double as we age. Be more modest, but don't look too dowdy. Cover your face with more makeup, but don't overdo it. Don't look like you're trying too hard, but dye your greys. Embrace your beauty, but don't be mutton dressed as lamb. It only gets harder. I have a better way. I've been running an experiment with my beautiful mom, Angie. We created a worst outfit for her and a best outfit based on her body type to see if the body types are just for young people or if they can be used as you get older as well. The transformation got over 3 million views on TikTok, so I thought it would be interesting to show you the process behind our outfits. My name is Ellie Jean, I'm a style analyst, and on this channel, we find our style by finding ourselves. Cupid Body Types is a system where you echo your dominant features in your clothing. It was developed by a man called David Kibbe in the 1980s, and this system completely changed the way I perceive personal style. I realized that you don't have to change your body to look perfect, you change the clothes to work for you. I often use myself as the subject of these transformations, but I wanted to branch out so I asked my mum if she would volunteer for me. The first step, of course, to find her body type. My mum is a dramatic classic, which means she's balanced with a yang undercurrent. So essentially, she doesn't feel particularly large nor particularly small. She's very moderate, very in the middle. She doesn't have many extreme features, but she does have some straighter shapes in her frame. She does have some traits of other body types. For example, there were comments asking if she could be a flamboyant natural or a flamboyant gamine. On the natural front, yes, she does have slightly square dominant shoulders, much more so than my own, which are very delicate. So she looks very different to myself, but they aren't actually wide or broad shoulders. They just have some dominance and that is her yang undercurrent. For flamboyant gamine, which are petite with sharpness, she's a little taller than me. She's between 5'3 and 5'4, but she doesn't have petite. The fact that some are asking if she could be a flamboyant natural whose dominant features are width and vertical and have larger bones shows exactly why I wouldn't consider flamboyant gamine for my mum. She is very moderate, she is very in the middle and she has a moderate vertical line. She doesn't look particularly short nor particularly tall. So as a dramatic she looks best in moderate, clean, simple lines with some straight and sharp elements. Some of her favourite styling elements that you'll find in her wardrobe which align with the dramatic classic include granddad collars, simple t-shirts, bootcut jeans, smart boots and smart straight jackets. So step one was finding her worst outfits. For the first half of the transformation, I obviously wanted to show you what her worst outfit would look like. There are so many variations of what we could have done here, but I always like for my transformations to use the clothes that we actually have rather than going out and buying even more ridiculous ones. I think half of it is the actual styling, not the items individually. And I think that makes more of an impact and it teaches you a little bit more than us going out and buying something obviously terrible. But obviously this is a challenge using your own clothes because generally we tend to like our own clothes. We went with this top because it has a tie in the middle, which is her worst point. She doesn't have a very defined waist. Looks like it's trying to force curve where there isn't any. There's also lots of detail near the top and she doesn't particularly like how it's cut on the shoulders. The pair of trousers took some digging to find. It was a bit of a challenge because she looks so good in trousers. And we did a transformation with her once before, which was very skirt based. And so we wanted to try and find a trousers outfit, which was quite a challenge. We ended up with these capri pants. They're three quarter lengths. This type of style is better for a gamine or a petite type. The short lines make her look dumpy because she's naturally moderate. Similarly on the waistline, they're at one of her worst points because they're more high rise than they are mid or low rise. So again, it just cuts her very much in half at her worst point. And then we thought, how can we make this outfit even worse? And we added these chunky shoes. At first I tried actually a really nice pair of loafers and I found that it added elongation between the end of the trouser and the end of the foot. So this would probably be like the correct thing to do and so we moved away from that and went mm, how can we make this even worse? So we went with a shoe which is going to attack at the ankle which again just highlights that little gap and makes it look even shorter and even dumpier. The shoe is a little bit too chunky and she's wearing things that are slightly too delicate. That juxtaposition just emphasizes how bad each of these elements are for her body type. And the interesting thing about the body type theory is that it's all about content. Context. Each of these pieces might actually look really good in a different context. Even though I'm pretty sure after this response, she's probably going to be getting rid of all elements of this outfit. <laughs> but depending on the styling, these pieces actually do have a place in her wardrobe. It's just the way we put them together, which emphasized all the wrong things. So of course, the next step is finding her best outfit. We wanted to create an almost exact recreation. Now, some of my transformations are more vibe based. So I'll do like a really casual outfit versus like an absolutely perfect outfit for my body type, which tends to be a little bit more formal. 
And those do really well, but I wanted this to be a real teaching moment. So we almost did an exact recreation of the outfit, but in her lines, which was actually quite a challenge, but I'm so pleased with the result. So we went with this shirt, which is very clean, crisp. It's the same sort of style, so it's sleeveless, except the neckline is much better. So rather than being open and wishy-washy, it's much higher and closed. Now the way she wore it in the video was completely closed. She probably wouldn't wear it like completely closed in real life. It's just the way it kind of falls on the camera. So it wouldn't be like a really sharp collar in real life. Granddad collars are great because they're so simple for dramatic classics and classics in general, because there's not a lot of fuss going on and that's perfect. It also has less curvy shapes in, the tie waist is gone and the silhouette is straight. So it echoes the lines of her figure much more nicely. Also without the lace elements, it's much less distracting. It's much cleaner, crisper silhouette. So this top is much better for her balance and her sharpness. The jeans are moderate to long in length, which is better than short because it echoes, of course, their own vertical line. The jeans are straight, they're not skinny, they're not flared. So they're not an extreme shape, they're very in the middle. And they're also very clean cut. I think the fact that they're a dark denim helps. They're not distressed, they're not got a range of washes in, they're just one very clean, plain color. And they also have a nice neat hem. And the boots, again, are improved because they have a slightly pointed toe, which honors the sharpness in her frame. And they're also a very clean, solid texture. We also tried a different style of outfit with a skirt. So the skirt is a moderate length. It has a straight-ish shape, very extreme shapes. Again, not necessarily right for dramatic classics because that's extreme and not balanced. The fact that this has some shape to it is a lot more balanced. It's a lot more moderate, much better for dramatic classics. And again, it has a mid-waist. The jumper has a straight shape and a simple pattern. It's not true that classics have to dress in completely plain clothes all the time, but keep the pattern simple. So one or two colors. And again, this pattern is very moderate sized. And also it has a high neck, so it honors the sharpness in her frame. One question I got a lot is why an oversized jumper if she's dramatic classic? My mum has stone in her style roots. She is stone, mushroom, and earth. If you don't know what my style roots are, make sure to watch this video. Her style, I would describe it as casual, relaxed, country, earthy, but also chic and smart and put together. In the grand scheme of clothing, this jumper is not oversized. My mum couldn't wear a Jennifer Lawrence style jumper, which is down to the knees, big wide sleeves. It would completely drown and overwhelm her, but it is proportionally oversized. So you can tell that this is an oversized jumper on her. Whereas on a different body type, this wouldn't even necessarily come across as oversized. It has the slouchy effect, which works for her style, whilst being proportional to her needs and the needs of her body type. Dressing for your body type is not something that's reserved to younger generations. It is never too late to take the style into your own hands and become a style icon. If you've enjoyed this video, I really think you should go ahead and watch my how to dress for your kibby body type for beginners because that's probably what you are and it breaks down all the different body type lines. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.